Hi there, and welcome to this 10-minute teardown, one of our series of 10-minute webinars in which we look to address key procurement and finance topics in coffee break-sized sessions. This episode focuses on electronic invoicing, looking at why it so often fails to deliver on the promise, and why we think you can do it differently to achieve great results quickly, cost-effectively, and with the minimum of process change. So everyone knows paper invoices and manual processing are inefficient, costly and error prone. No end of research supports what's actually a pretty obvious proposition, that if you're still processing lots of paper, it's costing you much more than it needs to. And that can be an order of magnitude more, with some AP staff processing up to 50 times as many invoices as others, and the cost of invoice processing increasing at least fourfold as a consequence. Our recent research at Wax Digital with over 200 senior finance people in UK businesses showed exactly the same disparity, but it's staggering that even now over a third of businesses we talk to still process invoices manually in the main. So let's look at what we're dealing with here and see why it's apparently so hard to deliver on the promise of a largely paperless process. Now, every organisation can broadly split its suppliers into three camps. The big suppliers who send you large volumes of invoices, mid-sized suppliers who send lesser volumes but still significant volumes of invoices, and your long tail of small suppliers that send you occasional invoices. And it's important that we look at those through different lenses, so we'll come back to that in a minute. But I do just want to get one thing out of the way first. When we talk about electronic invoicing, we're not talking about OCR or optical character recognition, where invoices are printed and scanned and the OCR technology reads the scan to extract the data from it. Because while OCR has come a long way, it's still far from perfect. It needs a lot of time to learn. It's thrown by simple things like different fonts and font sizes. And it requires continual oversight and correction as a result. So whilst it can be useful in some circumstances, it's not what we mean by electronic invoicing. Now, what we often see marketed as the alternative is the network managed service. So this is from providers who say, OK, give us your supplier list and we'll validate it against our network. And probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 percent of your suppliers already trade on that network, which is great because obviously there's no change management there. They can just add you as a customer. Um, but then we'll onboard the rest. And by onboarding, I mean we'll contact them all and persuade as many as we can to either integrate or use a portal or similar. So we've seen dozens of these implementations where even years after they started, only a relatively small number of suppliers are actually onboarded. So why is it so slow? Okay, well, just think about the process. First of all, you provide your supplier um, master list. That's then validated against the existing suppliers on the network. And as you say, maybe 20, maybe 30% of those suppliers are already on the network. Fantastic. You can start trading with them immediately. But for the remainder, there's a whole process of communication, change management, onboarding, which is done largely via email uh, and also by phone. So all of those suppliers have to be contacted. They have to agree to sign up to the network terms and conditions, to agree to trade, to change their business processes, to, to send invoices in the way in which the network requires. Very often that will also be a cost conversation to say, okay, if you send more than X invoices per annum via the network, then you have to pay for each of those invoices that you send. So not only is there a change process, there's also an acceptance of cost um, to deal with. And ultimately, that may get you know another 20 or 30% of the suppliers on board. But it will take maybe one, maybe two, maybe more years to actually get to that point. And of course, during that time, you're also adding new suppliers, changing old suppliers. So it's an ever-moving feast, which continually needs to be fed through that process. So just consider the change management involved in that. You know, consider an internal battle as an example, how challenging it can often be to implement a new system or process and multiply that by 3,000 suppliers or however many you have, you know, all external organizations that you have very little influence over. Ultimately, change is anathema to business. So what do we do differently? Well, the key thing is to make it absolutely as easy as possible for suppliers to completely remove, in most cases, the barriers to success, which are cost and inertia. 
So naturally, suppliers can invoice via a variety of means. We can allow them to invoice via EDI or XML if they're the larger suppliers, via the portal, uh, via scan and capture. Um, and let's just look at that in terms of our simple supplier segmentation. So again, for the very biggest suppliers, it may mean direct integration via EDI or XML. But for the mid-tier, it generally means sending invoices via email, which is a fully automated process that's supported by every single finance package you could possibly have. So instead of asking suppliers to join a network, which requires a lot of effort and management, we simply ask them to send invoices to a dedicated email address. And then we automatically extract the data with 100% accuracy. So there's no onboarding, no printing, no scanning, no keying. It is cheap, efficient and easy. For the third tier of suppliers, which is generally the long tail of smaller suppliers, you probably only do business with them sporadically. They're likely to send you a mix of paper and email invoicing. And for this tier of suppliers, we do encourage them to use the Web3 supplier portal, which is provided free of charge with no transactional cost of invoices submitted. And of course, you can also facilitate PO flip using the portal where purchase orders are flipped into invoices for a seamless two or three way match. But the important thing to note here is that the three way split of suppliers and invoices that I showed you is actually somewhat misleading in the way that I've previously presented it with equal weightings for each of the tiers. The fact of the matter is that the real picture looks far more like this, where a tiny number of suppliers, if any at all, might be in that top tier for EDI or XML automation and a tiny number of invoices proportionally will come in from your bottom tier of suppliers. So in fact that middle way can mop up the vast majority of your invoices for complete automation without the fuss. Take this example of a client of ours. Now these figures are relatively small. Many of you will have many more invoices than this but the metrics scale pretty much in line in either direction. So here we have 800 suppliers sending just over 44,000 invoices a year. None of these suppliers are well suited for integration, so the EDI XML route doesn't apply, but over 90% of invoices come from just the top 200 suppliers, meaning almost all of the invoices can be automated using a pr process that pretty much every one of those suppliers is already compliant with and using, simply sending invoices via email. The tiny remnant of invoices by volume can be pushed to the portal, they can be keyed or even no CR'd. So in summary, just by making things simple, by removing those barriers to success which require hundreds or thousands of suppliers to change their business processes, you can enable electronic invoicing quickly, cost effectively and most of all successfully in your business. And of course, electronic invoicing is only one part of the full suite of Web3 procurement and finance software available from Wax Digital. All architected, built and delivered by us on a single code base with a unique set of integration capabilities. So if you're thinking about electronic invoicing or anything else in the source to pay lifecycle, please do get in touch and we'd be really happy to talk to you about how we might be able to help.